Hi, my name is Dr. Amy Robertson, and I'm the Director of Music Therapy at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And today I'm going to be talking to you today about a research line that focuses on empowering parents, especially mothers, within the first few weeks, months of their infant's life to really improve uh, their attachment with their infant using music. So I'm going to take you through a brief review of LIT, um, as well as talk about the initial research study done in this line, and then follow up with the study that we just finished, which is the title of this presentation. All right, so the main idea behind this research is uh, the idea of mother-infant attachment and uh, securing a strong attachment with the mother. This must happen within the first hours, uh, days, and weeks of the infant's life, and this is why it's deemed the critical or the sensitive period. Uh, the infant needs to secure that attachment with the mother because that's going to set the infant up um, for long-term um, positive development. And so this attachment happens through many behaviors such as feeding, crying, face-to-face -face interaction with the mother, having that separation and reunion with the mother, as well as close bodily contact. Mothers that are able to secure this strong attachment with their infants are known to have a high or a, a normal level of maternal sensitivity. And what that means is that they're really good at uh, reading their infant's cues, they respond appropriately, um, promptly, they're aware of the signals, um, and this response helps to set up that, not only set up that secure attachment, but can also neg or positively affect uh, physiological systems within the infant's body, so e extremely important. This also, within this process, the infant must experience contingent experiences, meaning that that mother's response um, must happen within 10 seconds of the infant's cue. And so what this does is it sets up a healthy communication pattern between the infant and the mother, ultimately allowing the infant to easily adapt to his or her environment by setting up um, this good communication system. The maternal voice is very important to this attachment. We know that infants um, prefer the mother's voice first and foremost. Um, they're most familiar with her voice. Uh, they rely on her voice for early pre-language um, development skills. They will take um, emotional cues, social cues from her voice. Um, and it's again said that when the infant receives the mother's voice, as well as close proximity on a, a consistent basis, that it also helps to regulate all those physiological symptoms within the, or systems within the infant's body. Also, singing has been shown to be uh, highly effective within um, as far as infants attending to the mother's voice. So researchers have found that when infants or when mothers are singing, infants will often attend better than if just mothers are um, talking. And what's also fascinating about uh, mothers singing to their infants, not only it's something that's been done for years and years and years, hundreds of years, mothers have always sung to their infants, um, and oftentimes it's lullabies that they're singing. And lullabies reflect, within all cult cultures, reflect those um, foundational basic language um, elements that reflect that culture. And so um, singing lullabies really help infants, uh, really help to hasten language development. They're able to pick up on those pre-language skills um, better through singing. Uh, it's known to help regulate infant state. They're also able to pick up on emotional information that the mother is trying to convey in the lullaby. So extremely important. Um, I, we are living in a culture today where mothers are not singing as much to their infants. Um, we are really, really busy. We have technology all around us. And so um, there have been articles, especially within the past five years, showing that mothers are more apt to grab technology to turn on a song, turn on a video with the phone, with the TV, um, with the computer, to kind of take the place of that stimulation of just singing to their infant. Um, they're more apt to grab technology and the effect that that's having. And so um, one of the reasons for this research line is to really encourage parents to get back into that, uh, the habit of just singing with their infant and understanding the benefits it has. 
Other variables that affect that secure attachment, I'm not going to go into these for time's sake, but spousal support, um, mothers that are single versus mothers that are married or have a partner, um, mothers that are married, research has shown that uh, they're better at securing attachment, um, parity, mothers with one child versus mothers with multiple children. It seems, and the research findings are inconsistent in this area, but some studies have shown that mothers with multiple children are um, uh, have stronger attachments, and it could just be because they're less stressed. They understand um, how to um, uh, care for their infant better because they've already had a child. Uh, socioeconomic status can also affect attachment. If you have mothers from a lower socioeconomic status, um, they can be more stressed. Maybe they have to go back to work sooner. Maybe they're not engaging in those positive interactive behaviors with their infants, um, resulting in a weaker attachment. Postnatal depression, um, so um, up to 40% of mothers can uh, suffer from this. These mothers spend a long time in a negative behavior state with a flat affect, um, and so the behaviors, when they do engage with their infant, they're not as interactive. It's harder for the infants to pick up on those important cues, and researchers have found that infants that have been in these relationships uh, with these mothers have... Uh, around two to three months will actually start imitating those same behaviors. So a flatter affect, they won't be as interactive. As far as the line of research, when we're using music, um, looking at maternal interaction, um, there's not a large body of research, but overall, uh, we have found that when parents are educated, when they learn how to use the music, they will use it more. Um, they will feel more empowered and understand the benefits of music. Um, and here within this research that I'm showing, a lot of good benefits. Not only does you know, singing to the infant, it helps to soothe the infant, it can decrease stress in the parents. Um, parents, in some of the research shown that when they're taught the music intervention or engage within a music therapy group, that they um, engage in more positive interactive behaviors with their infant um, on their own outside of music time. Um, also, one study found that first time mothers reported being more relaxed and actually used live lullaby singing more um, when they were educated um, to soothe and, or stimulate their infant. Along with this line is using music contingently. And so if there are behaviors that we are wanting to um, increase or decrease, often, um, we can use music contingently, and we have found that it's uh, the most powerful way if we're wanting to eliminate a behavior or um, achieve a certain behavior and using music as a reward. And so looking at infants, a lot of uh, the studies that have been done as far as contingent music, they've used it with infants um, within those first few weeks looking at uh, infants with colic. And so and there's one study I want to point out in particular. So the contingent background music, um, contingent background lullaby, uh, recorded lullaby music, um, parents were taught to use this when their infants with colic were um, in a calm state. And what they found was that the music group, uh, the crying decreased 90%, which is pretty significant for infants with um, colic. And they also found that uh, the, the parents reported less stress as well. So coming, having, considering these findings, um, the initial research study, the idea was that we teach parents how to use music, lullaby music con, uh, contingently, specifically teaching mothers um, to see if using music in a contingent way will not only improve or increase interaction behaviors with their infant, but also decrease crying because crying is a huge stressor within the first six weeks of life. That's called the crying curve. And so crying tends to peak at six weeks. And so F music can be used contingently if they're engaging in parent and uh, positive interactions uh, more with their infant, will their infant cry less? And so this is the first study that me and my colleague, Michael Detmer, um, did. Uh, it took place at four different sites. Um, and we wanted to look at infant crying. We also looked at postnatal depression scores in mothers to see uh, if mothers in either group would be at risk. Um, we also measure parent-infant interaction behaviors. 
and also looked at uh, the value of music, if parents would value music, um, if there was a difference between groups having been taught the uh, intervention. And so I, uh, we were able to enroll 66 uh, mothers uh, or mother infant dyads into this study. Um, but given that it's a six week study, mothers have to stay in for six weeks. Um, it was difficult to keep everybody in um, just because of the longevity of the study. And so we did end up with 21 mothers in the experimental group and 24 mothers in the control group that completed it for a total of 45. I will go more into the uh, detail of the contingent music technique in the next study, which is a study that we just completed, but for time purposes, um, just getting through the results of the first study right now. Um, mothers consented on the postpartum unit. We taught them how to use the contingent music intervention. We also worked with them on writing an original lullaby for that contingent music intervention. They used that uh, intervention through the first six weeks of life. We followed up with them once a week to obtain um, crying time da data as well as um, mothers that were in the music group, um, how often they were using the contingent music intervention. And so a crying log was reported uh, for one day a week. So the same day each week, they would record the total amount of crying for that day. At six weeks, we followed up. Um, we met them. We recorded them interacting with their infant for four minutes. And so it was just, you know, do whatever you normally do um, playing with your infant when it's at playtime or interacting time with your infant. Uh, we just, we told them that they just couldn't feed their infant, but anything else, um, whatever they normally do. Um, so what we found uh, was that there was a significant difference in crying duration for the experimental group versus the control group. So within the experimental group, the infants were crying um, half the time that the control infants were. So at that six-week point, infants were crying about an average of 22 minutes versus 43 to 44 minutes um, in the control group. Um, and the standard deviation scores for the experimental group actually consistently decreased, which could mean that the mothers in the music group were actually maybe using the contingent music intervention on a consistent basis, and maybe it was helping to decrease crime. Um, there were also significant differences between groups for the, um, those positive interactive um, behaviors. And so within that four minute period, there was a higher frequency of looking at the infant, talking to the infant, um, higher frequency of the infant interacting in positive uh, behaviors with the parent, so looking, smiling, cooing at the parent. I also added singing to the coding survey just because I wanted to know if mothers that were taught the intervention would just spontaneously sing more during interaction time. And what we found was um, that yes, uh, there were pro I think it was like six to eight mothers in the experimental group that actually just spontaneously sung during that interaction period that they were being recorded versus no mothers in the control group that sang during that time. Um, as before, we did find that parents did value or did find more value um, in music and using music with their infants than parents in the control group. Uh, demographic variables was variables did not affect crime behaviors. And so um, we did have mother and lower socioeconomic groups, um, but none of that, none of those variables affected crying time. There was not a significant difference in postnatal depression scores. We did have more mothers in the control group um, uh, rate themselves higher um, or more at risk, um, but there was not a difference. Um, and then we found that mothers used the contingent music condition condition four to five times a day. So with this data, we wanted to look at, um, we then asked the question of parents and infants are spending more time uh, interacting with each other and they're crying less. Are they sleeping more? Developmentally at eight weeks, is there length and weight? Is there a difference um, between uh, the infants in the control group and the music group, are parents less stressed? Um, and again, are they still engaging in those positive interactive behaviors? And so the second study that we started, um, it took about 
two years to complete. It was funded, it was a grant funded study by the University of Missouri Research Board. And this one was extended to eight weeks of life. Um, so mothers, uh, we stayed in contact with the mothers for eight weeks and then followed up with them at the eight week point. Um, quickly, infant sleep, it's polyphasic. They engage in um, multiple um, rounds of sleep within a 24 hour period. They must engage in that. They must get adequate sleep. Obviously, it has many effects on the, um, the physiological system as they develop. Um, breastfeeding, some interesting findings. Breastfeeding or infants that are breastfed tend to not sleep as much. They tend to have more night wakings. Um, infants who are not secure in their attachment with their mother seem to not sleep as much. Um, and infants who sleep less uh, seem to have more difficult temperaments, as you could imagine. And maternal stress also um, is a factor within this too, as we've talked about. And so the research questions again kind of reflect the first one, but as I said, we're looking at sleep duration this time, um, an effect on stress, um, and then those developmental scores at eight weeks of life for length and weight. At eight weeks, we also looked at GERD and thrush in infants, uh, breastfeeding versus formula, um, the length of those stooling patterns, complications from pregnancy, perception of milk supply, if the mother uh, went back to work and how long she had been working, history of medication for mental health diagnosis, if there was one, um, and if there was a prior fetal loss. So all subjects were enrolled at Norton Healthcare in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, again, we uh, enrolled 60, so we were shooting for 30 in each group, 15 prima pairs, 15 multi pairs within each group. Um, infants had to be inclusion criteria that it just had to be a newborn term healthy delivery, um, and it had to be a vaginal delivery. So we found in the past that C-section, mothers who gave birth by C-section, actually that impacted their attachment or bonding scores because there's, um, they're restricted. They can't pick up their infant for about a week or so. And so we just wanted vaginal delivery moms. Um, again, they were consented on the postpartum unit within 24 to 48 hours of birth. And it was during that time that we taught them, if they were randomized to the music group, that we taught them how to use that contingent music intervention. And so that intervention, um, we worked with them on writing a lullaby for their infant. And so they got to choose um, the melody of the lullaby. Um, this seems to, the mother seem to remember the song better if they choose the melody. And so many songs... Um, or many mothers chose the melody to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or You Are My Sunshine. And so these seem to be the most popular that mothers um, knew or chose. Um, and then we worked with them on just writing a four to six line lullaby, um, encouraging them to use their infant's name as well as behaviors that they may engage in while they're interacting with their infant. We would record it for the mother just to help her remember. We gave her a copy of the lyrics. Um, and then we told the mother that when your infant is in a calm state, as soon as your infant becomes in a calm state, sing the song. This is their reward. When they're quiet and awake and alert, sing this song. And so here are some of the lullaby examples. Um, as you can see, just very sweet, very short. Um, we have Presley, beautiful Presley, we love you more than you know. Time to play and time to smile while I sing a lullaby. So um, I like this one, or all of these, because they start with the infant's name, uh, which is an easy cue for the infant. Okay, it's playtime with mom. And then we're talking about things that we're doing while we're playing with the infant. And so again, infants, similar to crying, the parents would log in a 24 hour period once a week, um, the amount of sleep time that their infant engaged in. Um, at eight weeks, we met them again, uh, recording them with a four minute uh, observational video uh, for parent infant interaction. Uh, we also had them complete the parental stress questionnaire. They submitted their sleep log. We also obtained the length and weight uh, data for the infant, uh, the two month data. And then they were also given a $50 gift card as an incentive to stay in all eight weeks. 
So we did have a high subject uh, mortality for the study just because for eight weeks, that's a long time. And so we did get a lot of moms that just stopped responding. Um, but we did have uh, 12 complete in the experimental group and a total of 13 complete in the control group. Um, and we did find a significant difference in uh, sleep duration. And so uh, mothers, and let me go ahead and look. Uh, so here's the graph. So as you can see at the eight week mark, um, infants in the music group were crying about two hours, or worse, were sleeping about two hours more, sorry, sleeping about two hours more than the infants in the control group. Uh, we did find that parent-infant interaction scores um, were not significant, but again, we had a smaller group than the previous study. Um, we did have a higher frequency for those in the music group for infant interaction um, scores, and we did have quite a few moms, almost half the group, again, spontaneously sing within that recorded um, video time, uh, whereas we only had one mom in the control group um, sing. There was no difference in parental stress scores, um, no difference between breastfeeding, breastfeeding and formula use, because um, this can affect sleep. However, this is fascinating because the infants in the breastfeeding group actually reported longer sleep time than the infants um, in the control group, uh, which contradicts the findings for infants who are breastfed that normally sleep less. And so maybe moms were using them the intervention consistently, maybe it was helping their infant um, overall sleep better. Um, there was a significant difference in income between groups, and so the music group did not have any mothers in the lower socioeconomic levels that could have affected um, that sleep data. Uh, no difference in primaparis or multiparis. However, most mothers in the music group had more than one child, and so again, this could affect the sleep data as well. Um, they're just used to the routine, they've done it before, so maybe they just had babies that slept better. Um, some of the comments from moms that we had, um, I love this first one. First time I saw him smile was while singing the song, he never cries unless he is hungry. Um, his, her first child cried all the time. And so I think that's very powerful. A lot of parents just found this beneficial. They enjoyed having the song, the personal song for their child, and then singing it. So challenges for the study, again, high subject mortality. Uh, parents would forget to submit their sleep logs or they would just stop responding. Um, so again, eight weeks, it's just really tough to keep um, everybody in, even with the incentive. Future research, um, we are really looking at, I think one of the areas that we'd really like to do, and these are all great past moving forward, but really looking at infants with neonatal abstinence syndrome. So these are infants that are going through what drug withdrawal. And there is um, a huge, there's been shown to be a huge deficit in parent-infant bonding with these infants, especially while they're in the NICU. So we're looking at possibly using this intervention and educating those parents of those infants while they're in the NICU um, to start that bonding process to see what effect it will have not only on the parents, but also on those infants um, to see if there are positive effects because that's really an area of need right now. Implications for music therapists really quick. I mean, this is an intervention that can easily be taught on the postpartum unit. That's an area that here in the U.S., a lot of music therapists just, we don't work in because we're either working with the moms on high risk who are waiting to have their infants or working in the NICU um, or in PEDS. And so this is one of those areas that we kind of um, miss, but this is actually a quick intervention educational opportunity for us if there is time to go work with moms that have just had their infants to educate them on how to use uh, music in this way. All right, so um, thank you for watching the presentation today, and I look forward to um, the questions at the Q&A session. Thank you.